Good morning. It's Tuesday, April 28th. It's going to be a warm, sunny day, so perfect day to get outside after our school lessons are finished. Uh, we are going to have another waxing crescent moon tonight. You should be able to see about 30% of the face of the moon if you look up in the sky tonight. Um, today we are going to finish our end of the year assessment for math, and we are going to work on pronoun verb contractions for our grammar lesson. And finally, we're going to read a book in our workshop book called Here Comes Solar Power. And we're going to preview that. That means do the, your first read uh, before we get together uh, for our Google Hangout today at 1030, okay? So let's start by going over the math, um, the re remaining part of the test. And don't forget, when you're done with the test today, please send me all the pages in order so I can start checking them for you. All right, so we are on number 13, I believe. We finished through number 12 yesterday. Yes, so we're on number 13. And number 13A says, partition this number line into eighths. That means eight equal parts. Label with fractions. So here's zero, that would be zero eighths. And here's one whole, that would be eight eighths. So I would split it first in half. And then if you split the halves in half again, you have fourths. And then if you split each fourth in half, you'll have eighths. And then I need you to label each tick mark from 0 eighths to 8 eighths, okay? Then it says, compare these fractions, right? Greater than, less than, or equal to to make the number sentences true. So we have 8 eighths and 1 whole, and you can check your number line for that answer. And then it says 2 eighths and 1 half. So you're going to find 2 eighths on here, and then which of the eighths would be equal to 1 half? So think about that, okay? It's the eighth that's going to be halfway between the zero and the one hole. All right. Um, number 14 says Arun has 12 eggs. He uses two eggs for each omelet and makes three omelets. How many eggs does he have left? So we, this is going to be a two-step problem. So you can either use uh, parentheses or you can write two different number models. So it says Arun has 12 eggs right? Okay. He uses two eggs for each omelet and makes three omelets. So that's two eggs for each omelet times three omelets, right? How many eggs does he have left? So he starts with 12 and he uses two eggs per omelet times three omelets. So how are we going to do that? Well, it's going to take two steps. First, you're going to have to see how many eggs he uses for omelets. And then you're going to have to take that from the 12 eggs he started with, okay? So see if you can write that, that number model. You can either use parentheses for part of it, or you can write two different number models, okay? Um, it says write one or more number models that match the story. Remember, if you write one, we use parentheses, or you can write two. Uh, use a letter for what you're trying to find out. So it says how many eggs does he have left? So we're looking for how many eggs. So you should use what? That's right, E for eggs. We're looking for the number of eggs that he has left. All right, show me your work. Then you're going to write Arun has and write the number of eggs he has left when you're done with your two number models and you've found the answer. Arun has blank eggs left. And then it says check whether your answer makes your number model true. Write your number model with your answer. So you're going to write the number model or models again with the answer. And does the answer fit your number models? All right, great. We're moving on to number 15. Remember, pause the video when you need to, okay? All right. So Sylvie ran three-eighths of a mile. Ivan ran three-fourths of a mile. Partition and use the number lines below to show how far they ran. So first at the top, it says you have Sylvie's number line. So for Sylvie's number line, you're going to need to partition. I'm just going to write S for Sylvie and I for Ivan. Okay, just like that. And they already have the number lines on your paper for you. So it says Sylvie ran three eighths of a mile. So you're going to have to break Sylvie's up into eighths. So they have zero and one at the same place on both. Here's zero and here's one. They already have that done for you. So Sylvie's number line, you're going to break up, a fraction number line, excuse me, you're going to break up into eighths. So starting with zero eighths, 
and then four eighths will be in the middle, and then eight eighths will be equal to one whole. Okay. And show me where would three eighths be? You can go ahead and make your tick marks from zero eighths to four eighths, and where would three eighths be? Show me that. All right, and then Ivan ran three fourths of a mile, so we're going to break Ivan's fraction number line up into fourths. So we have zero fourths, halfway would be two fourths, and one whole is equal to four fourths. So that gives you some help with that. And then that'll help you figure out where three fourths is. It's going to be halfway between two fourths and four fourths, right? You can go ahead and label the fourths on Ivan's number uh, fraction number line. Now you tell me who ran farther. So you should put a mark on Sylvie's at three eighths, and you should put a mark on Ivan's at three-fourths, and then tell me how who ran farther. Did Sylvie run farther or did Ivan run farther? And how do you know? The person who ran farther, their fraction's gonna be closer to one whole, right? Okay, so write those two sentences for me. Tell me who ran farther and how you know. You're gonna write their fraction is closer to one whole than the other fraction. All right, number 16, Mario's baseball practice ends at 7.30. So this looks like an elapsed time, maybe. His mom leaves to pick him up at 7.15. It takes 25 minutes to get to the baseball field. Will she arrive on time? Explain. So, the first thing it told us was that his practice ends at 7.30. So she has to make it, to, if she's gonna be on time, she has to be at the baseball field by 7.30. It says she leaves at 7.15. So once again, you're going to make a number. This is your explanation is going to be your timeline and some sentences. So she leaves at 7.15. So I want you to start your timeline with 7.15 p.m. And it takes her 25 minutes to get to the baseball field. So you're going to go 25 minutes into the future from 7.15 and tell me what time she gets to the baseball field. If it's before 7.30 or at 7.30, then she'll be on time. If it's after 7.30, she's going to be late. So it's, the question says, will she arrive in time? So you're gonna write yes or no, and then explain. Yes, she gets there at blank o'clock, um, which is before or at 7.30, or no, she's late, she doesn't get there until blank, which is after 7.30, okay? Remember, pause my video. You can go back and replay it if you need help, okay? All right, 17. Looks like we're going to solve some extended facts. So 17a says 60 times 7. What could help you with 60 times 7? That's right, 6 times 7. So if you know 6 times 7, you can, if you know that basic fact, then you can extend it by putting a 0 in the 1's place after the number for 6 times 7, and that gives you the, total, the product for 60 times 7. Okay, so use those basic facts to help you. B says blank equals 40 times 3. So if you know 4 times 3, then you can figure out 40 times 3, and you're going to write that product in front of it because the equal sign is here. C says 70 times 8, or blank equals 70 times 8. So if you know 7 times 8, extend that fact for 70 times 8, and you're going to write that product in front of it again. D says 6 times blank equals 240. That's a missing factor problem. It also could be a division problem. So you're going to ask yourself the basic fact, 6 times what equals 24? And then extend that for 6 times what equals 240. So you're going to have to look at the missing factor for that one. All right, what basic fact could help you solve part D? So you're going to do what we just said. You're going to rate the basic fact, 6 times what equals 24? to solve part D. That's your basic fact. All right? Great. Okay. Number 18 says, draw two different rectangles that have an area of 36 square units. This is one of those ones. This is a little bit tough. So two different rectangles that have an area of 36 square units. So we know length times width equals area. So if the, you're going to draw two different rectangles that equal 36. So you're going to have to come up with two different number models that equal 36. And I want two totally different factors in each one. And I know you can think of more than one number model with factors that equal 36. 
okay? So don't just reverse the factors. I don't want you to just, uh, I want two different, whole different number models, okay? And then you're going to uh, draw those rectangles. After you think of which two factors equal 36, length times width, length times width, you're going to draw those two rectangles. Make sure that the length is the first factor, the width is the second factor. And you're going to label the rectangles with a capital A for the first one and a capital B for the second one. Okay? Then it says write a number model for finding the area of each rectangle. You can write that right next to the rectangle, inside the rectangle, or um, somewhere else on the page, as long as I can see it clearly. So that's three, that's three steps. Make sure you do all three for each problem. That's six points total, and we don't want to lose points because we skip steps. The last part says the perimeter of rectangle A is, so then you're going to find rectangle A, and you're going to go around the outside and add all the side lengths for the perimeter. And tell me the perimeter of rectangle A. That's not the area now. It's the perimeter. So first you do the area. Down here you're going to do the perimeter. Then you're going to do the same thing with rectangle B. You're going to add all the side lengths together and find the perimeter of rectangle B. All right, pause my video till you're ready to go on. All right. When you're ready to go on, we are going, we have a rectilinear figure for number 19. Okay, can you see the rectilinear figure? All right, so we, it, the rectilinear figure is made up of two rectangles. So I see it's shaped like this. Right, I think I need to make it a little longer on this side. Okay, so I'll do that. Okay. And it says this top side is 20 feet, then 5 feet. We don't know how many feet this side is or this side. The bottom total is 40 feet, and this side length is 8 feet. Okay? Now, you can draw a line here or here. All right? If you decide to draw a line here, then you're going to find the area of this rectangle and this rectangle. Let's see. So this total is 40. Do we agree? This total line is 40. So if this half is 20, what's this half going to be? 20 plus what equals 40? So find that missing side length. For this missing side length, you have 8 here, right? So the total opposite side is 8. So if it went all the way up to here, it would be 8. We know this part is 5. So now you can say 5 plus what? equals 8 for that missing side. We already know 5. 5 plus what equals 8? So that'll help you find those two missing side lengths. And then you're going to multiply the length times the width for this rectangle, the length times the width for this rectangle, add the two areas together for the total area of the figure. All right, you could also draw your line here. If you draw your line here, then you have a 5 by 20 rectangle here and a 40 by what? Let's see. 40 by 5, what do we say? 5 plus what equals 8? So this is the missing side. We know we have 5 here. You're missing this one right here. This total other side is 8. So if this was a whole line and this was 8, this much is 5. What's this much? So like I said, that's going to be a 5 by 20 rectangle to find the area of that one, and a what times 40 rectangle to be the area of this long skinny one, and you could do it the first or the second way. Once you find the area of the two smaller rectangles, add them together, and you have the area of the whole rectilinear figure. So you need to tell me that. You also need to tell me how you figured out the missing side lengths, which I just explained to you, and it depends on which rectangle you picked. So go back and play my video again. Decide how you're going to partition that rectilinear figure and how you're going to find the missing side lengths for, the, uh, for yourself, okay? They're going to be, you're going to write number of models to show me how you figured that out. All right, let's see. That is lots of problems. That's all number 19. So we, let's just go over that. You need to partition it either here or here. Find these two missing side lengths based on the help I just gave you before. 
write your number. It says the letter A represents the total area of the figure. So you have three number models you have to tell me. You have to tell me how to find the length times width of both rectangles. So that's two multiplication number models. Add them together. That's an addition number model. You can show your work down here. Then you're going to write your answer with units, and we're measuring in feet. So this is area, so it's going to be square feet. And then how did you find the missing side lengths? We just talked about that. Write those number models for how we found the missing side lengths down there. Okay? All right. We are on number 20. Okay, let me put on my glasses for this one. Two third grade teams run races at field day. They run around the rectangular fields marked with cones and compare time. So here's rectangular field one, and here's rectangular field two. So they're running around. That means they're running around the perimeters. Gabriel says the race is not fair because the distance around field one is longer. Find the perimeter of each field. You know the opposite sides of the field are equal lengths. So if this side is uh, 50, then this side is also 50. If this side is 10, then this side is also 10. It's in yards. All right, and then you need to add 50 plus 10 plus 50 plus 10 to find the perimeter of field one, and you're going to write yards. Since it's perimeter, it's just yards, not square yards. All right, field two is a 25-yard square. So each side is 25 yards. So you're going to add all four sides together, write a number model for that, and give me the answer. You can write your, show your work, write your number models out here. How, what's the perimeter of field two when you add 25 plus 25 plus 25 plus 25? Write the answer with the word with a yard or yards. Is the race fair? Is the perimeter of both fields the same? Yes or no? If it's not fair, tell me which field has a longer perimeter. Okay? If it is fair, you can tell me the perimeters are the same. All right. Pause my video until you're ready to go on to number 21. Okay, we're on 21, and here we go. It says circle all the rectangles. Well, we know rectangles are quadrilaterals that have four right angles, and the sides are not necessarily all equal, but they could be equal lengths. Um, mark an X on all the squares. Well, squares are quadrilaterals. They're a type of rectangle. They have four right angles, but all of their sides are the same length. Right? Okay. And then it says shade all the rhombuses. So a rhombus is like a square. It has to have four sides. The four sides have to be equal length, but it doesn't have to have all right angles. So just keep that in mind. Okay? All right. It could have right angles, but it doesn't have to. All right. So that is that. Explain why the shapes you circled are rectangles. Well, tell me the attributes of a rectangle quadrilaterals, four right angles. What else can you think of? Okay, tell me why they're rectangles. Draw another quadrilateral, and you're going to use your pattern block template, your green pattern block template that I sent home with you to do this one. Draw another quadrilateral that is not a rectangle, not a square, and not a rhombus. So find another four-sided shape on your pattern block template that is not a rectangle, a square, or a rhombus. I know you can do it. We've done it before. All right, last but not least, we're on problem 22. They want you to make an estimate to check whether your answers make sense. So this is an addition sentence. This is a subtraction sentence. Make sure you watch the signs. Estimate by rounding each to the nearest 10. So you need to round 461 to the nearest 10 and 269 to the nearest 10, and you're going to write your estimate with your estimates answer for this addition sentence, and then you're going to add the exact number and find the exact answer. Remember, your exact answer and your estimate should be in the same ballpark, okay? For number uh, for letter B, you're going to have a subtraction problem. You're going to round 348 to the nearest 10. You're going to round 154 to the nearest 10, and then you're going to subtract, and your estimate should be close to your exact answer. So find your estimate and then find your exact answer, and they should be in the same ballpark. That's it for our end of year math test. Congratulations, third grade. You made it. I'm so excited. All right. Okay, so today for, uh, we are going to do a couple pages in the grammar handbook. And let's go over the, uh, what con pr pronoun verb contractions are, okay? A contraction is a shortened form of two words that are combined. 
An apostrophe, that's like the comet in the sky, like I call it, replaces missing letters. Look at the sentences below, examples of pronoun verb contractions. It's, that's for it is, hard work to write a book report. We're, that's the contraction for we are, writing book reports in our class too. I've, that's the contraction for I have, written a rough draft. My friend said he's, and that's the contraction for he is, going to the library to work on his report. And then last, you'll, that's a contraction for you will, be proud when you've, that's you have, oh no, excuse me, it's your, I'm sorry, I don't have my glasses on, your, when you are, done. Okay, so I, we, he, and you are all pronouns. And is, are, have, and will are all verbs. So we're combining the pronouns and the verbs to make contractions. Pretty easy. All right, we are going to do page 121 and 122 today. Remember, review the top of the page for help before you start because it gives you tips and reminds you of the different contractions. Write each you're going to rewrite each sentence, and where you have the underlined words, you're going to replace them with contractions. Don't forget the apostrophes. All right? You're going to do uh, on page 122, underline the two words in each sentence that you can make into a contraction. Then write the sentence with the contraction. So I'll read the sentence. We will have lots of fun at the park. We can underline we will because we can make that into a contraction. Right, it's we'll, W-E apostrophe L-L. And then you're going to rewrite the sentence. We'll have lots of fun at the park. So go ahead and do pages 121 and 122. And then when you come to our Google Hangout this morning, you're going to need, let's go a couple more pages and you'll find this. You're going to need the um, comprehension packet for Here Comes Solar Power. We are going to go over the story and all the skills and strategies together for this week. Before we do that, at 1030, I need you to go ahead and preview by reading the story Here Comes Solar Power. It's in your workshop book, your reading writing workshop book, right there. And you need to read pages 390 all the way through 393. On 393, you're going to see a sidebar. You need to read that too. Read the Make Connections questions. We're going to go and talk about it with a parent. And then go ahead and also preview our comprehension strategies and skills, which are ask and answer questions and cause and effect. And then you're also going to read uh, about expository texts, which we know so much about now, and homophones. Now remember, homophones, that's our vocabulary strategy this week, are words that sound the same, but they have different meanings, and they can have different spellings too. Okay? So we are going to talk about all of those skills and strategies when we cover this comprehension packet together at 1030. And I will see you then. I can't wait. You guys have a great Tuesday morning. Bye-bye.